Good day everyone and welcome to our chapter 1, the probability for industrial engineering and welcome to our subject course, is statistical analysis for industrial engineering. So we're going to have our lesson 1 of under the chapter 1. So we're going to have the review of basic concepts of probability or the set theory. So for our introduction, in all sorts of situation, we classify objects into sets of similar objects and count them. This procedure is the most basic motivation for learning the whole numbers and learning how to add and subtract them. This unit introduces the basic language for talking about sets and some notation for setting out calculations so that the counting problems such as this can be sorted out. This also discusses the scientific process involved in them which includes counting techniques and probability it is necessary to understand the basic concept of probability which is most important to study the statistics this unit has three lessons set theory sample spaces and basic counting techniques and probability so we're going to have the set theory so our objective is after careful study of this unit you should be able to do the following describe the relationships between or describe the relations between sets perform the set operations using proper notation and be able to draw the interpret venn diagram of set relations and operation operations and use venn diagram to solve problems number two we have to recognize when set theory is applicable to real-time situations, solve real-life problem and communicate real-life problems and solution to others. Number three, understand and describe the sample spaces and events for random experiments. Number four, use permutation and combination to count the number of outcomes in both an event and the sample space. Number five, understand the random variables. And number six, recognize when probability is applicable to real life situation, solve real life problem and communicate real life problems and solution to others. So these objectives will be encountered for the chapter one, lesson one, two, and three. So for our lesson one, we have the set theory. So we need to understand what is the definition of set. A set is a collection of objects where the elements or usually have something in common. A set can be described by listing all of these elements or it can be for finite set. Writing a description of its elements or equal function both for finite and infinite set or yung mga tinatawag natin countable and incountable sets. Between curly brackets, capital letters are usually used to denote as set so let's have a given example let us define the value as a set of counting numbers less than 10 so yung counting w natin will be less than 10 or w or equal to parenthesis na 1 to 9 so less than so kailangan uh, we, uh, we will not consider number 10 as a uh, part of the set no so we're going to have from number 1 to number 9 let us define f be an equation of the line is equals to function of x is equals to 2x plus 5 for every x or yung mga tinatawag natin for every set. Na? So, ibig sabihin, set, ano ba yung included of your sample? So, we have this subset. A subset is a collection of objects all belonging to a set. It is symbol as a subset kung makikita nyo yung ating symbol let us define so let's have a given example let us define A as a set of odd numbers less than 10 so ibig sabihin natin yung set natin from 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 so ibig sabihin this is a consider a subset kasi included pa rin siya from less than 1 to Na, uh, less than 1 to 10 so ibig sabihin, kinukuha lang natin yung 
ating add numbers. So, add, na add numbers natin is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So, ibig sabihin, part pa rin siya ng set from 1 less than 10. So, let us define B as a set prime numbers less than 10. So, ano ba tinatawag natin mga prime numbers? So, we have 2, 3, 5, 7. Pagka sinabi kasi natin pr prime number, only 1 lang siya o yung any numbers multiply by itself, the answer is only 1. So, 2, 3, 5, and 7 are under of a set. So, kinoconsider natin siya as subset kasi under pa rin siya ng whole numbers. Let us define C as a set counting numbers less than 6. So, counting numbers daw from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, ibig sabihin, kahit kinonsider natin or nagbigay tayo ng limit from number 6, this is considered as a subset pa rin of a set from less than 10. So, we can denote A, B, and C are subset of A, W. So, ibig sabihin, si A, B, and C ay sako pa rin ni sample of W. So, let's have the universe or universal set. A universe or universal set is a collection of object of interest. It is also referred to Two, as the totality of all objects under study are of interest. Upper case of letter U is used to represent the universal set. So, mas malaking C. So, let's have a given example. Let us define U as the set of real numbers. So, ibig sabihin, si, pag sinabi natin universal as a whole. So, ibig sabihin, meron ka lang part of region na kinukuha. Pero si W kasi, is under pa rin ni universal. So, nagkakaroon siya ng subset. So, let's have the empty or null set. It is a set with no elements. Example, let us define D as a set of counting numbers less than 10 that is divisible by 10. So, ibig sabihin, uh, from number 1 to 9, wala naman dong divisible by 10. Kasi when we are talking about divisible by 10, 10, 20, 30, and so on. So, ibig sabihin, kapag wala doon sa number of sample, ibig sabihin, siya ay empty or null. So, let's have the Venn diagram. A Venn diagram is a pictorial representation of set and how they are related. Shapes, such as rectang rectangles and circle are used in the Venn diagram. So, if you will notice the different uh, circles inside the box. So, yung box kasi natin will be the universal. So, d uh, using the Venn diagram, we can define uh, the previous example. No? For example, we have the set. No? Pag kasi nabi natin set, ito siya. Yung set A, yan. No? Pag sinabi natin universal, sakop yung buong ABC. No? Pero pag sinabi natin set A, may makakakuha ka ng uh, portion kay B, makakakuha ka ng portion kay C. So, yung buong circle niya. Yun lang yung dapat natin kuha na. So, this is only the representation of every set theory. So, let's have the operations, set operations. Number one, we have the union. The union of two sets is a set containing all elements that, I, that in either set, the symbol U or the small U is used to indicate a union. The following are the cardinally or the number of elements. So let's have a given example. So we have the N, which so we have the given sample. So, we have the A, ito yung A po natin, and we have the B. So, ibig sabihin, union. A, union of B. So, combine. So, pag sinabi natin A and B, so, i-combine mo yung all given sample. It's equivalent to N, uh, quantity A natin, yung ating sample dito, plus the NB. So, combine yung dalawa. So, minus the A, or the subset of B for any set of A and B. So, another example. So, we have AU. Kung mapapansin nyo naman, disjoint set yung A and B. Pero, pag sinabi pa rin natin na uh, union of A and B, kahit magkahiwalay siya, pagsasamahin mo pa rin. So, for number 3, for set A, 
B and C. So, pinarami lang. Tatlong set yung ating combination. So, pinagko-combine. Combine lang natin. So, let's have the intersection. The intersection of two set is a set containing elements in both set. The symbol, so, kabaligtad lang siya, na U, is used to indicate an intersection. The following Venn diagram shows the relationship of an intersection between set A and B. So, ang intersection natin dito ay etong gitna. So, iyon lang yung kukunin nating shaded part. No? Another example, two events A and B are mutually exclusive or this join A is an intersection of B equals to null. That is, A and B have no elements in common. So, wala naman silang intersection eh. Well, hindi sila nag-intersect with each other. So, ibig sabihin, null yung ating intersection. So, kapag magkahiwala yung ating sample A at sample B, wala tayong makukuhang intersection. So, let's have the complement. The complement of a set contains all elements not in the set but still the universe. It is usually des designated as a A prime or yung ito yung mga symbols na makikita nyo. So, ibig sabihin, pag sinabi nating complement, uh, for example, we are getting the A so, yung A kukunin natin as a whole set, pero hindi siya kasama dun sa ating complement. So, kukunin lang natin si B, C, at yung mismong universe sakop niya. Pag sinabi naman natin B, ito yung naka-white, isyashade natin yung letter A. So, kukunin din natin yung lahat. Yan. So, let's have the law of sets. The law of sets are presented in this part of the unit with Venn diagram to easily understand each set. So, let's have the law of set, identity law. So, identity, identity law, so, ibig sabihin, uh, with a given example or the Venn diagram, you will notice na dito, ito yung ating universe sa box, pero nakashaded part is yung letter A. Pwede rin natin i-identity law based on the given universe, kasama ang universe, at the same time, given yung ating shaded part pa rin yung ating sample a. So, eto, pwedeng paghiwalayin pa rin, so shaded part pa rin. Dito kasi is union, A and B. Dito is intersect of A and B. So, ibig sabihin, with the universe tsaka si B ay nakapatong, makukuha pa rin natin. Pero dito is A null. So, ibig sabihin, hindi doon nag-intersect. So, ibig sabihin, wala tayong makukuhang data. Let's have the law of sets. So, n for law of set number 2, idiom potent law. So, we are getting the A, no, pa rin. So, A is a union of A itself. So, dun siya, sa mismong sarili. Intersection of A, so dun pa rin. Nasa loob lang siya ng mismong universe. Next, law of sets. So, we have the components of law. So, if we are going to have the A and the A prime, so union is equivalent to U. So, itself pa rin. Pero pagka dito, A tsaka yung A prime natin ay null. Dito naman, A, A prime or quantity A prime is equivalent to A pa rin itself. Dito buo, kasama. Dito wala. Dito itong A lang. Let's have the law of sets. Commutative law. So, pagka sinabi natin commutative law, so, we have the given A tsaka B. Kahit balik rin mo man yan, kinuha mo ang union ni A tsaka ni B, pinag-add mo. A plus B pa rin yan eh. Diba? A plus B, yun yung magiging result mo. Or B plus A, yun pa rin yung magiging result mo. There's no change pa rin. You know? Or, for example, we have the intersection of A and B. So, kahit balik na rin naman yan, A plus B pa rin, kung ano yung data ng B, ano yung data ng A, kung ano yung given example nila, intersection is almost the same. We have the Morgan Law. So, we have the union of A and B prime, and we have the intersection of A and B prime. So, kung mapapansin nyo dito sa part na to, 
So, almost the same lang naman yung ating given example. So, yung A prime natin, ito pa rin yun. Ito. Pag sinabi kasi natin yun yun, buo. Buong A and B, tapos buong B. Kahit may sakop na si A, ya-add mo pa rin yun. Pero pag sinabi natin sa ano, intersection, ito lang yung given part. So, same with this one. For you to understand those, so we're going to have a given example later on. So, we have the associate law. So, associate, so if you will notice, no, it's either A, no, union, A plus, ano lang yan eh, A plus quantity, kahit i-add mo muna si B or si C, tapos i-add mo si A, equals the same pa rin. Or i-add mo si A, tsaka si C, plus i-add mo kay B. So, almost the same lang din siya ng uh, commutative law na A plus B. Almost the same. Okay. So, let's have the distributive law. So, pagka sinabi natin distributive, no, we have that shaded part region na kailangan lang natin kuwanin. For example, B and C. Intersection ni B and C. So, ito yung intersection ni B and C. Yung part na to. E, eh, kukunin din natin yung C... Uh, intersection ni B tsaka ni C ay union kay A. So, ibig sabihin, pag sinabi natin, i-add natin yung buong A, so, may nakuhang part dito si intersection, kukunin pa rin natin siya as a part of in intersection. So, yan siya. Okay, let's have a given example for you to understand those uh, different sets. So, a survey on a TV channel reference show 40 housewives so ito yon sa A natin, channel A, ito daw, 40 daw yung kabuuan 40 housewives 115 preferred only from channel B so channel B, if you're going to compute the sum, a set of B, 115 lang yung sakop nya then 39 prefer both channel so A and B so, pinagsama, so we have the given intersection of 39. So, ibig sabihin yung 39, merong uh, out of 115, so yung partition na 39, kinuha kay 40, tsaka kay 15. And 27, do not prefer either of the two channels. So, wala daw kay A and B. So, ibig sabihin, under the universe siya. Let's compute. How many were in uh, letter A? How many were included in the survey? So, ilan daw yung included sa survey natin or how many TV channels do we have? Letter B, how many preferred channels in letter A? So, ilan lang daw yung channel for letter A? Letter C, how many preferred exactly one channel? Letter D, how many preferred at least one channel that prefers one and two channel? So, I will show you the Venn diagram for you to understand, no? kung paano siya kinocompute. Okay, for letter A, so ang question natin kanina for letter A is how many were included in the survey? So, ilan daw ba ang included sa survey natin? So, if you're going to compute survey, so ibig sabihin si set A is part of the survey, si B is part of the survey, and the intersection is also part of the survey. So, the, the whole universe is part of the survey. So, you're going to add 115 plus 39 plus 40 plus the 27. So, you're going to have 221 respondents. For letter B, question is, how many preferred channels in letter A? So, ilan lang daw yung preferred channel? So, kahit na sinabi natin may 40, ang kinukuha natin is the whole letter A. So, ibig sabihin, si intersection of A and B kasama siya as part of the A kung kukunin mo yung the whole circle of the letter A. So, 40 plus 39 is equivalent to 79 respondents. Letter C, how many preferred exactly one channel? So, we have the channel A and B. So, pagka daw kinumbine natin yung channel A and B to preferred one channel lang. So, hindi natin kukunin si intersection. Channel ni B, 115 channel ni A is 40. So, you need to add. So, you're going to have 155 respondents. Just simply add. No? And let num lastly, num letter D, 
how many preferred at least one channel that prefer one or two channel so ibig sabihin um, pinagsama na natin si A and B included pa rin si ating intersection so ang channel niya sabi nila may preferred channel daw si letter B na 115 at may preferred channel si letter A na 40 at meron daw preferred channel both 39 so, ibig sabihin, 40 plus 39 plus 115, you're going to have 194 respondents. So, yan po yung mas madaling way para ma-identify natin yung mga different problems using the Venn diagram. So, that's the end of our lesson 1 and thank you. Have a nice day.